very good morning from Big Gosh in Poland for the final day of Big Gosh 2021, the World Para Athletics European Championships from the Szczecinska Stadium in the north of the country on a wonderful day where we are going to see 32 medals up for grabs over two sessions, 11 will be in the morning session on what is a fantastic morning for athletics. Just have a look at that. 20 degrees, the expected maximum. Perfect conditions for the athletes, whether they be in the track or the field. And we've seen a load of European Championship and world records set already in the opening four days. What will the final day here bring to these championships? Do you know what? I'm going to miss it after today. It's been fantastic. Well, the pick getting ready. The men's long jump T37 will be first out. Fellows uh, Zarabini of Ukraine will get us underway in that event. Timothy Adolf will go out in the men's 100 metres T11 as he looks for a 100 400 metres double. Then, as we head further down the list, we'll finish up just after lunchtime. Maria Pomazan will take. To the circle in the F35 women's shot put, but it is the men's long jump T37 which will get us underway on the opening morning. Seven medals up for grabs in the field, four on the track, and the man to beat in this will be the reigning European champion and championship record holder, Vladislav Zarabini. You just saw the wind sock there as they went past it. Absolutely no wind. Hasn't been predictable when there has been a slight breeze. It's sometimes been in a headwind, sometimes a tailwind. And the long jump pit. But today, this is life. the only yeah. negative to come out of all of this is unfortunately we don't have spectators there. But it's been brilliant over the past four days. The athletes and the support staff have been filling those seats after their events or pre their events to cheer on their fellow competitors. Not just the competitors from their own countries either. As always in the para athletics community, there's a real sense of community amongst everyone. We're ready for the men's long jump. T37, Urban of Slovakia. Okay. Lifetime best of 4.93. Sherman Komosov, the man is in the MMA fighting, will go second. He was uh, DQ in the 400, but took bronze in the 200 here. Pentaurus okay. of Cyprus with a season best of 5.69, just below his lifetime best. Konstantinos Kamaras, silver in 2014. He lives in Loughborough in the UK. Optrek of Poland, who was silver back in 2018. Okay. Ito Kuzma of Finland, who's already raced here in the 200, where he was seventh. Great Britain's Barney Corral, his first major championship, started competing in 2017. Valentin Bertram with a lifetime best set this year of 6'10". And here he is, reigning champion. He was bronze in 2017 and 19 at the world. Vladislav Zalbini of the Ukraine. This is the coordination impairment category. The second least of the impairments. T35 to 38. 38's been the least of the impairments. Well, I understand what they're doing, getting under that umbrella to keep themselves nice and cool, but. I can't say we've seen a lot of sunshine this year in Europe. Well, certainly the part I'm in, anyway. I just hope the sun cream's applied. Well, while we're waiting for this, it's probably a good time to 
bring in the man who'll be working okay. alongside me today. Uh, Clearly a greater sense of humour than myself as well. Valentin. Will Downing. Good morning, Will. Well, hi, greetings. It is a lovely, lovely day in Bidgosh, and we've had some just utterly fabulous action in the long jumps this week. Our Fleur Young going out beyond six meters yesterday in the T64 final. We're underway in this straight away. It is Urban of Serbia. And this is one of the largest long jump fields that we've had. So we will have that cut off after eight where we'll lose those outside the top eight. He's used the board very well. And so Urban of Slovakia gets the combination off underway. Well, that's four meters, 49. But Sarabelny is the one they have to beat going into this as nobody beat him last time, having taken the European title. Kobosov continuing his immensely successful time in the sport. And he's plowed through, that's heading out towards six meters. He's a 6.15 jumper in his career, which is the third longest lifetime best in this. The championship record held by Sharabelny when he won in Berlin. That should be the lead. And we are full of field finals as usual this morning we've got the men's javelin f54 and this the men's discus f34 uh, michael vimmer of the czech republic first of all a lot of those in the discus will also be competing in the shots and the javelin so Donatis stunzis has had a very successful week as well. Mahola Shabniak of Ukraine up next. Jakub Miroslav of Poland doesn't appear to be starting. Mihal Palig of the Czech Republic. There are four solid 45 minute throws in this and Lukas Janetsky of Poland is one of those. Ronnie Jensen of Denmark also Lifetime best of 48 meters. Yuri Kohut of the Czech Republic, a regular strong meddler in the throwing competitions. And for Poland to wrap up, the 22-year-old Damian Robinowski. Well, back we head to the men's long jump T37. It is Karamaras. It was Kobosov for that first, by the way. It was a foul. So no mark for him. This Karamaras takes off. He took silver back in 2014 in Swansea. Did the man from Greece. Nothing the matter with that. That is a very decent takeoff indeed just left that left leg slightly behind himself so Cameras does hit the mark 507 as a matter of fact and he goes into first place so Kubasov who just saw walk past in the background there and Pentaris both with fouls in their opening jumps. Urban started off 449, but that man there, 507 in the lead as Optrek of Poland.
Well, Camaras was silver back in 2014. This man here, Obtrek, took the silver four years ago in Berlin. Now that looked like a pretty good takeoff and jump as well. He likes it. He likes it very much indeed. Obtrek's lifetime best is 6.23. That is just two centimetres off the championship record that Salvini set three years ago in Berlin. That's a brilliant takeoff. Got plenty of height, distance on that one. And when the athlete jumps up and says that they're happy with it, then you know. And Optrek is happy with that. And that's why he's happy. Six metres exactly takes him into the lead with a season best for him. Fernandes Charisma, who has competed here already in the 200 metres. Certainly not as much distance there as Optrek just got, but the takeoff looked satisfactory at first glance. Although, first glances can be deceiving. Well, he's questioning it, but what would have happened is as his foot pushed forward, the toe of it has gone into the plasticine. It was extremely tight. The questioning is still going on. So from there, as he dips down, they're saying that's where his toe went into it. He's accepted the decision. You never argue with the referee. Yeah, it's a minor indentation, but it's enough. What a belting morning. There's been a real mix of weather this week, though, hasn't there? See, they've taken it out just to show the coach as well. And they're saying, well, that's the indentation there, and it'll be a, a fresh block. And they can have it there to study as much as they like. So here so, comes... For Great Britain, here's Barney. His first championship jump. Lives in West Bridgeford. He's with Charnwood Athletic Club. He's coached by Chris Sinclair. And that is going to be a red flag. And uh, I don't think they'll be taking that out to study it because that looks pretty open and shut. Right through. And not much doubt about that. Next up is Valentin Bertrand, who finished fourth in the last European long jump in Berlin, but did claim bronze in Grisetto. His major championship debut coming on home soil in Lyon in 2013. In the 400. Good run up. Now, is that a fair jump? Poland have had an excellent week, being hosts and usually win a lot of the merchandise and they have done this week leading with Ochozak with six meters Bertrand with his lifetime best this year of six meters ten 
That should be enough to propel him into the medal straight away. There have only been three marks so far. And Bertrand, 576, goes into the silver medal position. Our defending champion and championship record holder. For Ukraine, Vladislav Zarabelny. 100 and long jump champion in Berlin. And that's why. So smooth. In spite of the coordination impairment. It's the uh, second least restricted of the categories no use of the board at all so that's about 20 20 centimeters plus given away three bronzes across his last two world championships so he's a man on good form and that is the lead six meters 16 for the defending champion And it's only 15 centimeters off the European record. Urban, one of the five to get on the board in the opening round. There were four no jumps. 4.49, which is about half a meter off his lifetime best. So if he can improve that a little, he gets beyond camera. So it's doubtful it's happened there. But right now he's lying in fifth spot. Nine starters, so we'll lose the bottom placer in round three and the pressure on Coral, Kovashov, Kuzma and Pentaris having missed in the opening round, which means they'll have to push it a bit more in round two. Urban. Delighted, 450, he improves, and he's still in fifth place. So the men's hit discus throw F37. Robletsky, a few fouls, and those above him, so a great opportunity here for the pole. Just 22 years of age. His first major championships. For Damien Robletsky. 32.04. So that will move him up into the bronze medal position. So a solid start by the youngster. Pressure, first European Championships, first major championships. This man's been there before. He was seventh three years ago. But his first yielded nothing. How's his second? Well, it's certainly a clean throw into the field. Competed in the javelin throw three years ago, this time in the discus, 21 years of age. He's from the TJZP Harmer Club in the Czech Republic. Well, 33.90, that moves him above Robletsky, he just threw a moment ago into the bronze medal position. Up steps Dundas. Absolutely no messing about here. Well, Dundas, who picked up the bronze in the shot put, that was a lifetime best. That there, though, wasn't. So he sits in sixth position. 
does the Lithuanian. But as you can see there, lost his balance outside the circle and red flag straight away. So the leader, Japniak, 44-43 with his opener. Well, that looks pretty good as well, doesn't it? When those who are marking it are standing 10 metres in front of where it ends up, you know it's a decent enough throw. Gold already in the shop put in a lifetime best of these champs. He's the 2014 and 2018 European champion, defending champion. He's also won Paralympic silver as well as we head back to the long jump. Poland represented by Matthias Auterek, who had led with six meters, his season's best. And four jumps later, the defending champion, Vlad Jarabelny, overtaking. Auterek is a long jump specialist. There's only three of these uh, nine starters who have been involved in the sprints this week. Well, Zhabniak, by the way, on that last throw, 49.01, extended his lead out to 11 metres now in that discus throw F37 final. Well, he's staying consistent. That was 5 metres 91. Started with six stays in the silver medal position. The man from Radom, which is one of the main bases of para sport in Poland as we move to Finland and Etu Kizma came very close to a medal in the 400 meters, finally finished fourth in that. He's been in the 100, the 200. So he's uh, spread his experience around, definitely. One of those with uh, no jump in the opening round. You remember it was so tight. They were debating it for a couple of minutes, but if you watch the replay, then the spike would have just brushed in, or really just the front tip of the shoe. As we go back to the discus and another pole. Well, the field action coming thick and fast. Shinetsky, his first was a foul. three poles in this event. This is the same category as the long jump, which is taking place as well. The F37. As we head back to that. Yeah, Barney Coral is another of those who's missed out in the opening round, but the other three who did have no jumps in round one have now all achieved so what can he pull off here that's another close one and they're studying it and that is another no jump so he's under a bit of pressure here oh that is so marginal well, I think it's the same again as what we saw in the opening round for Christmas. Just basically the the tip of the shoe must have brushed off it. Only by a slender amount, and they're looking at it obviously really closely. And you could have something like Hawkeye in this if you like, but... He's got only one attempt remaining. I was going to say, you could, you could have some sort of laser technology there, but it probably just isn't feasible. Well, see, first up event on the track for the morning. Three heats going in the men's 100 metres T11. Timothy Adolf, the European and Championship record holder, will go in heat three. Three starters in this one. Among those, the man who picked up silver 
back in 2018. On the right of your screen there, we'll be going from lane three. And Statichos Capellas of Greece. And in lane five, it's Alexander Novichikin. 20 year old, his first major championships. While the 37 year old Solomovich will go from lane seven. This is the complete visual impairment category. So a guide is compulsory. Does take a little while at the beginning just to get themselves set. The guide will help the athletes. The tether you see if you're new to para athletics will be between the guide and the athlete they're running with. And the athlete must cross the finishing line first. Otherwise, it is disqualification. David Brown of the USA, set in Walnut in California in 2014, holds the world record. Set. Dolph, the championship record in Berlin three years ago of 11.16. They get away with no issues. And it is Gavilas, who's in lane three, who's taking out to the lead here, and he's doing it rather easily. Let's have a look at the time. 10.99, a new European record. But well, he's taken four one hundredths of a second off Timothy Adolf's European record he set in Dubai just two years ago. Only first place goes through to the final. The next fastest across those three heats will go through as the fastest qualifier. Well, that'll get the cobwebs off, won't it, first thing in the morning? Got off to a very quick start. The reaction time was brilliant from Gavilas. Novichikin tried his best, but it was the Greek who looked extremely solid, taking that European record. It's been routed down to 10.98. So the first through to the final is Anastasios Gavilas of Greece. Ten point nine eight taking point zero five <laughs> from Dubai two years ago. <laughs> so a new European and championship record there for flying Greek. Well, I'm thinking they can't find the light switch on those light poles because they've been on for pretty much the whole championships. Perhaps they need to leave them on. Well, I remember in Rio, they actually the left the lights on. They'd left the lights on in Rio all night, one of the evenings. So a whole lot of moths were attracted overnight after everybody had gone home, and then they'd laid dormant during the day. And then when the floodlights were switched on again, the following evening, they all came out, a bit like what happened at the Euro 2016 final. Here's a new event for us, men's javelin F54. They're all taking the throws at once. Ravenko, two no throws at first for Russia for 2165 has given him a good early advantage. Well, while Ravenko is going, I can tell you that Solomovich in the T11 opening round heat of Israel has been disqualified. Made no difference because he finished in third place, so Novichokin had finished in second. And just to reconfirm that Gavilas with that European and Championship record going through to the final in 10.98. Ben 
is discus throw F-37 as we head back to it. That there is Dundas. We saw the Lithuanian in action a short time ago. And that one looks pretty decent. His second was a foul. His opener was 29.38. What's this one brought? 41.67. That is good enough to take him up into second position. And uh, just to update you on that men's long jump T37, there's been no change at the top. Surabelny and Outerek not progressing from their first round attempts of 6, 16 and 6 metres respectively. And Barney Coral of Great Britain hasn't had his third attempt yet, but he has had two misses, the only one to be in that situation, which is the last thing really that you want in the long jump because what you want to do is you start conservatively in the first round although obviously our two leaders haven't done that at all and then you can really push for it in the later rounds but every miss you have and the longer that you have no mark then the greater the pressure is and the more scope for something to go wrong So it's Atsurek in second place at the moment for Poland with that opening round attempt of six metres in new season's best. 16 centimetres behind our leader and defending champion Jarabelny at the moment. It's a good tilt. 677, that world record mark, remember, from Shang Guangzhou in Rio 2016. Absolutely no problem with the board at all. from one potential Polish medalist to another. Atrek with 5.84 to Zjabniak. Well, Zjabniak has thrown a monster there. That's up near the world record. Fifty-five seventy-one is the European record set in Lyon at the European Championships by this man back in 2013. The championship record he has set in Swansea the year after that. 55.71 is the European record. 59.75 is the world record. 54.22. Jabniak with a huge throw. So back to the men's 100 meters T11, the opening round. There are three heats in this, and this is heat two. Escaraga, Pustaval, Bova and Bojic, the three in this. Only the heat winner is into the final, plus the next fastest. So in lane three, for Spain alongside this guy, Guillermo Rocco Gil, it's Escaraga, Pustaval. The 2016 Paralympic champion, the 2017 world champion over the 400 meters. Oh, European nice. gold in the 400 as well in Berlin, but dethroned Sylvain Bova in five with his guy, Germain Hewajin, fourth in the 400 meters here. 
silver in the 200 in the last Euros, and for Omar Bojic of Bosnia and Herzegovina alongside his guide Nabojsa Kordic, semi-finalist in the 400 meters here, his first major championship. Descarago Pucdeval with two silvers already at these Europeans in the 400 and the long jump. Descarago Pucdeval, Bova Bojic. Only the winner going through. <laughs> They're away. Solid start by Descaraga Puchdeval, whose strongest event is the 400 meters, but he's looking good in this 100. Descaraga Puchdeval is going to take it and reach the final. He wins. Boyer in second place, and Bojic in third. Quite straightforward for one of the best T11 sprinters around, and it's a lifetime best by 100th of a second. 11.46. Well, that was very straightforward. It was outside the medals, unusually, in uh, Dubai in the last World Championships, when he finished fourth in the 400 and seventh in the one, which meant he went out in the semi-finals. All the athletes with guides, so there's only ever four in the decider anyway, as there'll be eight athletes lined up. Four teams of two. And the Spanish duo here. Well smooth. Descarago Puchdeval making it quite easily. Although the fastest time of his career. Sylvain Bova in second place. He's going to have to hang on for the moment. And Sylvain Bova will not be going to the final. He hasn't been quicker than another chicken of Russia. Who had that lifetime best in the previous heat. As we go back to Ravenko, who is our first thrower in the men's javelin at 54, and he leads 28-39. This is fifth round attempt. His lifetime best set this year of 26-51, so he's been doing exquisitely well this year. This is his first major championship. Started in Para Athletics five years ago. Twenty-nine meters eighteen, a new lifetime best, another new lifetime best in second of the morning. Excellent venue. It's just such a pity that Poland, an excellent para sport nation, gets its big chance to host a major event, these European Para Athletics Championships. And it just happens to be in an era when we're not getting spectators at sporting events. Now, Barney Coral is out. He's had three no jumps, I'm afraid, in his major championship debut. So he has been eliminated. It's only the top eight progressing to the final three jumps, as is traditional. So Coral is out, and this is Kohout. The man's discus throw, F37. 
continues at pace, but that will make it even quicker because that was a foul. Straight into the netting for Kuhau. So the check will remain in eighth position. Robletsky in seventh. He's got around two metres to make up if he wants to move up a position. And that is uh, well out of the vector, so that's a foul as well. So we're in the home stretch, that's the no change there for Robletsky as they continue with the fourth round of throws. But it's time for the final heat. The men's 100 metres T11. And this contains the man who, prior to the opening one, did hold the European and Championship record, Timothy Adolf. Same as before, the first will go through. <laughs> Adolf will start from the middle. Patrick Axelson, 27 year old from Reykjavik, will go from lane three. Adolf, who's he's disqualified four times at major championships due to guide issues, will go from lane five. Already a gold medalist in the 400 metres. Looking to get those records back now. As we see the Nevas. Also in that final for the 400 metres, the 20 year old, his first major championships will go from lane seven. Well, I wonder how much emphasis she put on a regaining of a record in a heat or whether you wait for the final. That final taking place tonight just before 8 p.m. local time. The winner of this heat guaranteed a place in it. That man there has already picked up a gold in the 400 metres, so he'll be going for the double now. Looking to get through to the final this evening. Gold medalist in 2016 and 2018, so he's going for a hat-trick of European Championship wins. Axelson in three, Adolf in five, we said in the Vass. In seven, and it is Adolf who gets away quickest of all, and he's looking very strong there as they ease through that middle 30 metres or so. Let's just have a look at the time as he goes across. 11.08 well, is the time as he goes across, so it's quicker than his own European or championship record. And he goes through to the final. He's equal, he sees the best. We see it in the Vass, 11.60 for him. Second at Axison, 12.30, but my oh my, he looked very, very comfortable indeed, did Timothy Adolf in 11.08. Now that record he held before was 11.16, the championship record, so he would have taken the mark off that if it hadn't have already gone in the opening. So point one of a second outside that new mark set by Gavilas in the opener. But he looks to have plenty left in the tank. Timothy Adolf. So he equals his season best in qualifying 11.08. Also qualifying is in the VAS with 11.60. He goes through as the fastest qualifier. So there it is. It's in the VAS and the final heat takes that extra qualification place. Descaraga, Pujdeval, Adolf and Gavalas with that new European record.
go through at the top of the pile. Well, I mentioned it a little earlier. There have been wonderful scenes with the athletes who have either already competed or are competing in the coming days. They've come out to the stadium. They've shown support for their fellow athletes. And that really makes a difference with no spectators allowed into this venue, unfortunately, such is the case in Poland. As we head back to the men's discus throw, F-37 and Zhapniak with his fourth set to go again. Leads on 54-22 with his last throw. Well, 55-71 is the European record he set eight years ago in Lyon. He came up just short of that with his last. Fifty-four eighty-nine. He was around sixty centimeters shy of that. This one, though, looks a little shorter because last time he was much further out towards that yellow tape at the world record. Forty-nine seventy-five. Still, though, good enough to put him in first place if that was all he had. So the first of the throws up for the fifth attempt, penultimate throw of the competition, Yuri Public. Ah! Well, that one this time has gone within the vector for Yuri Kahoot. 35 years of age from Zelenitsa where he took up athletics at the age of 10. Also competed in the long jump and the javelin throw. Yet to medal though at any major event. And unfortunately for him, he left one left, that's a foul. Robletsky in seventh position, still needs to make up that couple of meters to move up into sixth. Two fouls with his last two and that as you heard, straight into the metal work on the way out. So three consecutive fouls for the pole. Uh, Mikhail Vimmer of the Czech Republic will be up there perhaps a little quicker than he thought he'd be. Back to the men's long jump T37 and it's Optrek for the season best in his opener in second position. He's chasing Zarabini. No change at the top apart from Valentin Bertrand with his third round attempt, 583. Climbing a place above Sherman Kubasov. So Optrek, silver in the last Europeans in Berlin in 2018. Heading out towards six meters, but doesn't look an improvement of what he's achieved previously. No major problem on the board. Well, I'll tell you what. That's close enough to have been given the last couple of times because the front of the running shoe was just scrub across the plasticine, but he's been called okay. 583. It's solid. It would be good enough for silver in its own right, but it's ever decreasing circles at the moment. As we go into the men's 100 meters, T12, medium visual impairment, again, three heats in this and it is only the winner to go through. Zach Shaw of Great Britain, Roman Tarasov of Russia and Igor Savchuk of Belarus are in this. Well Shaw, whose European medals have come in the Universal Relay Silver last night, 
gold, three years ago, he's in three, from the Tarist of Russia in five, who had Universal Relay gold last night, and Igor Savchuk of Belarus, a very impressive championship debut all. And he's essentially running in a football shirt again. First major championship, he was fifth in the long jump, he was brilliant at that. And he's still only 17. I mean, what a talent. We've seen some fabulous new names this week. We're going to see another of those very shortly in the uh, women's T54s. But it's only the winner to qualify, Shaw, Tarasov and Savchuk. Plus a lone fastest loser. Set. Away first time, there was a little wobble on the block from Tarasov, but he's okay. Tarasov just in front of Shaw at the moment, and he's progressing really well, but Jock has got away. Tarasov is just going to hold on. Tarasov wins at 11.02, Shaw in second place, and Savchuk in third. That was a good run out for those two. Well, Zach Stock came very, very close for Great Britain. Best individual event coming in for Lenny was fifth in the 200 meters there. Has a prospect of reaching the final here. And obviously, if it's fifth in the 200 and it's T12, well, then he uh, was the best last remaining semi finalist as he wasn't in the final. Stayed up really well with Tarasov, but Tarasov, who himself is awaiting his first individual championship medal on the international stage, just had enough. So Tarasov qualifies 11.02, equal lifetime best for sure. So Dundas has just gone here. Zabniak, the man who's at the top of the pile in the immense discus throw F37. European and championship record holder, 54-22. He went so close to breaking that championship record and also the European record with that third attempt. But he is a mile clear at the present time. After this, we'll be into the final round with everyone left to have the one throw, the eight left. Zhabnia looks pretty good to retain that gold medal, 49 point. 4-0, so under the 50 meter mark again, just the one over the 50, but all of his throws good enough for a gold medal. Yuri Kahoot, fourth time lucky. Thirty point eight two with his opener, thirty point seven four with his second, three fouls. As we look to see if this time he gets a mark. He does. Thirty one sixty seven and he does improve as well. But he stays in eighth spot and that's where he'll finish. Well, Robletsky is in the same situation as Kahoot. He fouled his last three as well. And just like Kahoot, his first was his best until this one. So can he be a mirror image? Well, I can tell you that's a foul. Commentator's curse. Every time you build it up, that's guaranteed to happen. A 
Well, he's got a lovely day behind him. Robletsky, four fouls to finish with, so he will stay seventh. Here comes Mikhail Vimmer of the Czech Republic. Three checks in this one. He's currently in second position out of them. Vimmer with fouls on his first, third, and fourth, 33.90. The second. Twenty eighteen he threw the javelin. He was seventh in that. He's going around the discus in twenty twenty one. Just to remind you if you're new to para athletics, this for the coordination impairment category which on the track will be 35 to 38 and this is F for field as 37s Ben's Javelin throw F54 <laughs> Stefan Adakis of Greece with his second he's in second position at present and that looked yeah, decent he's the reigning Paralympic champion as well and everybody in this is a specialist. Not competing at any other throwing event. Not now, not usually. Yeah. 30 meters, 74. He comes into the lead. Breaks the championship record of Alexei Kuznetsov. So the men's 100 metres T12. It continues. Second heat of three. This one sees the championship record holder, Matus Mikalski, in action. Set that back nine years ago. Now, Mikowski didn't finish the 400 metres. He was due to go in that. He went in the heat. He ran about 50 or 60 metres and then dropped down. Artem Loganov of Russia. 2016 European champion in the T12 category. Marcel Bittiger, the 28-year-old physiotherapist in Germany, will go. And he'll go with a guide. This being the option to have a guide or not in the T12s. And Fernandez Tauler will go in lane seven. Oh, yeah, so yeah. the medium visual impairment category, you can run with a guide if you so wish. Mikowski, the pole took gold in the 2013 in 20 in 2018. It says Tokyo will be his swan song if. He gets there. On your, please stand up. Green card. Sorry. Slight bit of movement. Up they get. So they'll have to reset. And Mikowski will be in Turkey. Okay, just to let you know, he's won two World Championship golds as well. As I said, a European Championship gold in 2016, silver in 2018, so he's had a pretty good career to date. As has the man next to him, Artem Loganov. Fernandez Talia out here in lane seven. Picked up a silver in the 400 metres and that one that Mikowski okay. dropped out of. Prefers that event, but he's in the 100 here. And he gets away as they all do. And looking really good is the man with the guy, Bernica, who's out in lane five. He's looking very strong indeed, is Marcel Bernica. And he's going to go through and take it. 10.96 is his time that he goes through in. So Bernica definitely goes through to the final. And that was a very quick time. Mikowski has finished in 11.19, so he's quite some distance outside his own championship record that he set 
nine years ago and log it on in 11.21 so a bit of a turn up for the books perhaps with Bernie get going through but the synchronicity with his guy was absolutely fantastic took the lead around the 15 or 20 meter mark and just sped away from the rest of them as Artenov and Mikowski did their and that is important when you have a guy with you it's so important to run in a synchronized manner the sprint events more so So 10.95 for Bernigat as he goes through. That one there, a new lifetime best for him. It is Obturek, his fifth round attempt in the long jump. Still in the silver medal position. Six metres is best. Zerbelli is still leading on 6.16. Trying to push it. This is the same position where he finished at the last Euros in Berlin. But he is a 6.23 jumper in his career. There's other half of Natalia Yzinska. That's a name you'll recognize. Bronze. The Euros herself. <laughs> 559 each jump shorter than the previous one Bertrand still in bronze as we go to the uh, women's shot put F33 all throws coming at once Liaku of Greece uh, 529 her best that was her fourth round throw she has the advantage at the moment and been throwing advantage as well in terms of time but obviously she has no say after she steps away but the good news for her and the uh, interesting thing about this is that it's a straight shootout for the gold Alex Jürgen of Poland is the other one in it so we'll know who the champion is very quickly 529 have met the last two throws have been no price. That's it, Liakou, a three time European Championship medalist. It's Urban, his final attempt in the long jump. Well, the Slovak was the first to go in the opening round and he got a, a good solid four meter effort on it. And as a result, he has stayed firmly in the competition all the way through. There was no fear of him. There were quite a few others who had fouls in the opening round. Had to recover. Kobasov better than any of them. He's actually now got up to 584. He stays fourth, but he's two centimeters off Bertrand in the bronze. Urban hovering around his lifetime best anyway. His last round will not see an improvement, and he finishes in eighth. That was four meters ten. As we go to the second heat of the men's 100 meters, T12. Again, it is only the winner who's guaranteed qualification. But Kasia Farley has excelled in the 100 meters previously. It's big raining. World champion. For Norway, he's just three in lane five. For Spain, for the winner, Martinez. And in seven for Portugal, Luis Gincalves, the European 200 meters champion. 
from Berlin three years ago. Twice a world oh, champion over 400 meters. Juan Muna Martinez, the European 400 meters champion in 2016. Kashifali, 10.44 is lifetime best. The Bergen school teacher. Lovely place, Bergen. Kashifali in three, Muna Martinez in five, and Luis Gincaves in seven. Set. <clears throat> Left pondering. A little long there, but Kashifali is well into his stride. On his way through to it, Muna Martinez for the second goal. Calvert's third, and that's a blistering time. 10.75, a new championship record for the world record holder. The hottest of favourites. The hottest of dancers, well, that's up to you. But the main job he's done very well. It's his first European Championships. He debuted in a Dubai at those worlds. He's already been in the long jump where he's been trying to branch out as a lot of sprinters do and vice versa. Matthias Bukowski had held the old world record from Stadskanaal in 2012 in the Netherlands. Not anymore. Kashkafali looks like a man who's wanting to break all the records. He now does hold all of them from European point of view. Championship European and world records. That was the last one on the list. And simply because he hadn't run any Europeans before, well, now he has. The quality continues. 10.75, the new championship record. Muna Martinez, 11.51, and Goncalves in third. Kashifali's world record is 10.45. He qualifies, along with Butke, Tarasov and Shaw as the fastest loser. Next uh, action on the track will be in around 10 minutes time as Olex Juk, the second thrower in the women's shot put F33 in the straight battle for gold between her and Antti Yaku. And she got it. There you go. Well, that's the issue, isn't it? With a race in two, there's, a, there's an issue, isn't it? You have a race in two, once the first person's gone, if you throw further, you win. Well, she might have an eye on the championship record, 749, the world record, 781, her lifetime best is 684. Well, we have seen Stranger, haven't we? We saw young uh, Olivia Hendricks when he ran the race by himself yesterday in the T64 400 metres, and he ended up setting a lifetime best. Yeah, and technically, because there were due to be two starters in that, uh, so it's, uh, it's it's like this, it's a race for first, but obviously there's times for qualification for the Paralympic Games, there'll be Which he has. Point. So it was, yeah, it was, it was worth it. So it's worth doing, it's worth doing. I mean, in the end, it ends up being pretty much, you know, just if you like an exhibition, but still, it, it has an importance all of its own. So we're into the final four jumpers of the men's long jump. Sherman Kovistov finding himself outside the medals at the moment, but 584, he's getting closer and closer. He's only two centimeters away. And that might have just pushed him up beyond six meters and into the medals. The former European long jump champion from 2016. He'd previously been a world champion silver medalist in this, was fourth in the last Worlds in Dubai in 2019. 
and that definitely is best attempt of the day. Has he left from fourth into a medal? And if so, what position? Six meters 14, he goes up to silver. So close to the goal. Bertrand has been knocked to four. Needs to go above six meters now. And set a new lifetime best to get back into the medals. Well, apart from the two red X's, actually good consistency in the jumping. Now he missed the border. That's 25 centimeters given away. And if that ends up being anything greater than 575, then he's gone further in actuality than the bronze medal winning jump. But it won't count as such. It was 587. It's the best of the day. And if only he'd hit the board. He might just have gone past Opturek and the six meters. This is he, having led for a part of the first round, now relegated to bronze, having won silver at the last Europeans. There's nobody who could knock him out of the top three now, but can he find the extra centimeters to get silver or even the gold? I think that's going to be waved as a red flag. And Opturek. Rolls into another European medal and it's bronze this time. Six twenty-three, his lifetime best, but oh, well, that was a proper foul. No studying needed there. But there are other things he have been studying. So bronze for Ovtrek, Kovacov gets the silver, that's now confirmed. And so Rebellion is our champion again. Second consecutive European Championships in which there's been a title for him. He's gone seriously strong there. His championship record is 6.25 from Berlin, the European record is 6.31. That's a serious effort that looks beyond six meters and maybe even the 6.16 he had in the opening round to win. No problem about being at the ball to that. His lifetime record is 6.25. That's from his gold medal winning jump three years ago. He loves it, and with very, very good reason too. A new European record as Vlad Girobelny goes out to six meters 33. He breaks the nine-year-old European record set in London 2012 by Gotcha Kugaev and breaks his own championship record from three years ago. Chairman Chobosov with the silver and Ovtrek with the bronze. You saw, I think that actually was Natalia Yazinskadera like her other half won major championship medals in the long jump. And we know who's won the woman's shot put as well in the F33. Alexia brings another title for Poland. That will put them into double figures in gold medals this week. They've had another very successful time of it. They've been excellent hosts. They've hosted all the major athletics and para-athletics events this year so far. What a marvellous set of results. Only 19 centimetres between all six rows. That's six, 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 two. She is the European champion.
Joanna Lexiak claims her first major championship gold. Also a world rowing championships competitor. And having finished fourth in the world in Dubai in 2019, that her best global result. She's in with a great chance now for the upcoming Paralympic Games in Tokyo. Alexia takes the European gold, Yaku of Greece in second. Well, the women's 5,000 metres T54 final. Manuela Shah holding the world and European records. Petrova with the championship record. Neither of those in this. Patricia Aitchis will be looking for a third gold medal of these championships, having won 800 in a championship record and 1,500 metres gold as well. But she'll be chased down by two others who have also picked up their share of medals. Silver in the 1500, bronze in the 800 for Nikita Dembo, the 30-year-old from Harlem. And this lady, what a championship she's had. Merlet Marie Menya, 16 years of age, silver in the 8, silver in the 100, gold in the 400. And looking for a hat-trick of victories is that lady there, Patricia Aitchis. 800, 1500 gold, championship record in the 800. 31 years of age, and isn't she having a great time of it? This is the fastest of the wheelchair category, so 12 and a half laps they'll complete. And by the end of it, we will have a T54 gold medalist. Now, that lady there was victorious in the 2018 London Mini Marathon. She was only 14 years of age. And 16 years of age in this one. She's certainly given herself plenty to look forward to in the future. We talked a moment or two ago about Olivia Hendricks, the 17-year-old from the Netherlands. And this young lady, born in 2004, is going to have a big, big future ahead of her in Paris sport. So at the moment, it's Den Boer who's been slightly left off the back, the lady who competes in power across the country as well hard to see off in a t54 5000 meters event she likes the longer distances and at the moment as they head around with 11 laps to go it hasn't changed at all from where they started there in a line with hs in front Menya in second, and Dan Boer, who's sitting back in third position. Yeah, for all these three, it's been pretty much the best championships of their respective careers. Obviously, in the case of Menya, as it is her first major championship, but gold in the 400, silver in the 100, and the 800 for her. I just edged out the medals in the 1500 the other night, where she finished in fourth place, but she's making good headlines. She's from uh, good Medigan, and uh, she's already making good headlines in Germany this week. She's uh, close by Constance, right down in the south. Three medals. She competes for the City Gymnastics Club in Singen, and she was a spectator at the German Para Athletics Championships in 2011, and absolutely loved what she saw. So I make that she'd have been about six or seven years old when that was the case. So from an immensely young age, she's just known what she's wanted to do with her life. There was that success in the, in the London Mini Marathon three years ago, and that probably she was really good at this. But in the case of Patricia Inches, Patricia Keller for many years, of course, her first championship gold medals in the 800 and the 15, but she is from one of the great wheelchair racing nations anyway in Switzerland. And Nikita De Boer, likewise, who I make this her first European Championships, silver in the 15 and bronze in the 8. And again, an excellent para athletics nation in the Netherlands. They've got brilliant sporting facilities. Doesn't matter where you go in the country. I've been 
passing by lots of uh, their athletic stadiums and sporting stadiums on the train lately. Quite a few baseball stadiums actually they have in the Netherlands unusually. They're well coached. They've got a great good name coming up in 10-4. But Germany, in the form of marvellous Merla Marie Menya, have got themselves, I was going to say a champion in the future, but she's a champion of the present. There's not much doubt about that. I, I would love to see her in a few years take on the, the McFadden's of this world. That would be quite fun. So we're looking at, at Paris and LA for that, probably. Yeah, that would be an interesting time, wouldn't it? The only problem is there is how far forward is someone like Tatiana McFadden going to travel and going to continue in her career? Is she going to be where Menya is at the height of her career? Anyway, as they round around, it's interesting about Aitchis as well because she's won that eight, she's won that 1500. Marcel Huda, we've already seen win those two events as well. So looking for the uh, hat trick events here is Aitchis who. Uh, well, she tried swimming and tennis before opting for para-athletics. It's amazing, isn't it, how you find something that suits you in any walk of life and you end up moving on with it and you continue. She has a strange hobby as well. She likes visiting medieval markets. I wouldn't say that's one of my favourites, but everyone likes something different, don't they? That's some so good ages. ones. <laughs> I look forward to you telling me all about them. Aegis who sits out in front, it's Menya who's in second place and Den Boer who's back in third position. But Den Boer, I know we've been talking a lot about Aegis and Menya here, but Den Boer at the back, she's likely a great turn of speed because she does like those longer distances. No change. And just as I say that, Den Boer is coming down the inside to have a crack at the lead. I think Aegis and Menya have done their fair share of being out in front and as it is they've said to Dan Boer you can come past and you can have a little go H itself was uh, fifth in this event back in 2018 so by the process of elimination she's going to finish further up this time isn't she because there are only three in the field which does help somewhat but she's certainly building nicely towards the Paralympic Games in Tokyo later in the year. Dan Boer, who has only been around for a couple of years, she won last year's London Marathon at the Paralympic Games, and she's looking like she's well on her way to doing that disappointment for her at the... Uh, first major championships a couple of years ago she finished just out of the medals in fourth position but we may be missing a, a few people from these European championships with Tokyo on the horizon but it's certainly provided a platform for the people like Menya, the people like Hendricks of the Netherlands to really show us their wares and show us there's a, a new breed of power athlete who's coming through and that the norm might not be there for a long time to follow. So as they head through again, it is 2,000 metres left to go in this one. Five laps, H is out in front. Menya in second, and there's a bit of a play on now from Aitchis to try and get across in front of Menya, but it's the German who blocks her off, and the pace is somewhat quickened. When they come around, they'll have four laps left to go. And that's when you'd expect a real play to be made. The only issue is if you go too early, you'll burn yourself out. We've seen some great men's T54, 5,000 metres over the years, and we've also seen some crackers in the women's category. When there's only three in it, it makes it a little bit more cagey as to who's going to make that move, because in the bigger fields, there's always going to be someone who's going to get out there and try and get themselves out to the front. But as it is at the moment, it's Menya 
who's pondering, who's wondering what she's going to do. Well, Dan Bohr, so Dan Bohr, having won the London Marathon, obviously great at the longer distances. So perhaps this is uh, an event in which she's going to excel in the track in years to come. Well, I'm sure the field events are start, going to start watching what's going to happen. Because we are coming towards that business end. Three laps remaining, and Dem Boer has put on a berth. These 5,000 metres races, they go very, very quickly indeed. And we've seen a, a fair few incidents over the years as well with upturned wheelchairs accidents burns of skin coming off because they've crashed over each other can be a little bit like the wild west at times not through intentional purposes but just by the sheer fact that when a wheel clips another one the physics of it means that one will flip over and end up hitting another and taking a few out so that's what I was talking about before. We have those bigger races. People try and make a move because they try and get on the outside. They try and get themselves into a clear air position where they're not having to worry about anyone clipping them or bashing into them. You can see Menya's front wheel there, how close it is to the tail of Dan Bohr at the front. It's all about trying to get in a little bit of a, a slipstream there, similar to motorcycles, similar to cars in F1, for example. All about trying to make that air move around the outside of your wheels and try and keep yourself in less air hitting you in the face and slowing you down and making your job slightly easier. You'll see it in the uh, cycling all the time, and that's why these ladies are currently changed position to route. But it's Dan Bohr who's going to go across and take the bell, who's in first position, who's going to have to make a move before someone else does. As Benya moves around the outside, and HS is being, well, not left off the back, but she's going to have a fair bit of work to do to try and push around the outside. The problem is when you start going wider, you start covering more distance, and that uses up more oxygen. But it, it's Menya who's moved around the outside. She's already picked up that goal in the 400 metres, a double silver medalist over the one and the eight. She's also a fourth place, but she's out in front at the moment. Here's the young 16-year-old, and she's racing away, and it's going to take something special to catch her from here. She's an absolute superstar of this T54 game. She's racing away. She's 10, 15, 20 metres out in front. That's a battle of the second. Don't worry about first, because it's Germany who's going to take it. 16-year-old... Merla Marie Benya has picked up her second gold medal of these championships, her first at this distance, her fourth overall as far as medals go here. Well, that was quite something. She blasted away towards the end. She won the mini marathon in 2018 in London. We knew she had the arms for it when it came towards the end. We knew she had the stamina. And now we know she's got the gold medal. European champion, championship record, 1152.30. Merlin Marie Menya. Take a bow, ma'am. Well, each just was going for those hat trick of goals herself. She looked steady throughout. They stuck with each other. No one got left off. It was Dan Bohr who took the bell. And Menya, with around 300 to go, worked herself out a little wider, got herself out in front, and then when she got to that last 150 metres, she absolutely powered away. Not a superstar of the future, a superstar of the here and now. She is Merla Marie Menya, 16 years of age, and she's a double gold medalist. Second of the championships as far as silver goes for Dan Bohr after a silver in the 15 and bronze in the 8 
And for Patricia Edge as well, she took gold in the 8 and the 15. She has to settle for a third place in the 5,000 metres T54. Championship record then for Benya of Germany, 11.52.30. Dan Poor in silver, and it's Patricia HS who finishes third. That championship record, by the way, was set by Kocharova back in 2016. As we go back to the men's scissors throw, F37 and Shabniak. 54.22.22. And that one has just about stayed in. It was big, it was long. Must be not too dissimilar to that 54-22 he's thrown. He already has the gold medal. It was a free throw. He can do what he wants. 53-92, so Zabniak. Hangs on to the gold. He's away ahead of Dundas, who takes the silver. And Jensen of Denmark picks up the bronze. It was quite astonishing for Menya doing that at the age of 16. She's the German champion over five distances as we join Markovic in the men's javelin F54. And that is his fourth foul out of five. So just the one mark registering for him so far. We have had a championship record in this from Stephanie Darkest of Greece, that 3074 from earlier. But quite a few lifetime bests as well. From Jukran in second place and Ravenko in third, who we saw earlier. Seven throwers in this in total. Alexei Kuznetsov, the Championship record holder, the former European and world champion, going out to 2872 and not in the medals. Markovic's uh, lifetime best is 1949, so he's not going to get realistically any higher than fifth. Uh, there's two more to throw Georgiadis and Makov. Well, the long jump has given us one of the performances of the championships and a brand new European record for Vladislav Sharabelny went out to 6 minutes 33 a new championship record as well breaking his old mark from three years ago Kokaev's European record from 2012 so Rebelny takes the gold in the men's long jump 6.33 top it off the silver for Russia and Obstrek the bronze for Poland. For Markovic, who we've just seen at that men's javelin F54, and make that his first major championship at the age of 44. So next event coming up, the women's shot put F35. Coordination impairment, and it is the most impaired of the four standing coordination 
categories and there are four going in this. And there's one woman and they all have to be. The shot put bronze medalist from the last Europeans and the Luxembourg the Czech Republic. The woman with all the European championship records and all those goals, Maria Pomazan for Ukraine. She goes next. And up for Great Britain. Anna Nicholson, 847 is her lifetime best. She finished fourth in the shot in the world in Dubai. And for Poland, 844, her lifetime best for Claudia Malashevska. Silver in the last Europeans in this shot. And bronze at London 2017. So looks over, Pomazan, Nicholson, and Malashevska. Pomazan has not been in international competition this year, but she's won pretty much everything from a European point of view for the past few seasons. Might not necessarily have needed to. She's won two of the last three European titles. She's a seven-time world champion. Five in the shot, twice in the discus. So looks over to get us underway for the Czech Republic. 8.66, her lifetime best, 7.31 in season's best. Keeping going her uh, somewhat unusual career of being a sprinter and a thrower. Fourth of best global results in the shot in London. The media studies graduate, that's useful. So the next final on the track, the men's 400 meters, T 36. Three in this, Juska, Protonotarius, and Shvetsov. Kenny Shvetsov, the former European world and Paralympic champion, has won nine European titles in his career. Most recent one this week in the 100 meters. Lucas Protonotarius recruits in for seventh in the 100 meters. At these Europeans, sixth in the 100 and the 200 in Berlin in 2018. And the defending European champion from Poland won the 200 title also in Berlin in 2018, Christoph Juska. So Juska in three, Protonarius in four, Svetsov in five. The final of the men's 400 meters, T36. And they're away, and what a start by Shvetsov of Russia. Well clear, reacting the quickest. Team 36 is the second most impaired of the coordination impairment captains, of which there are four. And he is well clear of the other two. Look at that gap on the back straight in a 400 meters final. Shvetsov way out, about 40 meters, clear of Protonarius and Juska. Now, obviously, if there's a little bit too much strain on the body in this competition, the body can tend to shut down in the closing straight and you lose pace immediately. But he has got a great advantage here, Svetsov. Jusha in second for Poland. Protonaris well back in third. Well, this looks like it's going to be a very good time for the European record holder. And he's European champion again for the 10th time. 
54-33. He's fetched off wins for Russia. Jusa is second for Poland. And Potanari is third for Greece. Well, that was a blinding margin of victory in the end. Uh, wasn't that the Europeans in 2018? But he won gold in the four and the eight. The last time he was at a Europeans, and every European he's competed in, he has won the 400 meters title. All four European Championship 400 meter crowns that he could have won, he has won. 2012 in Stans Canal, 2014 in Swansea, Rosetto in 2016, and now Bitgosh in 2021. Well, the start was fantastic. The other two reacting not as quickly. But dressed off well in his stride. His European record is 53-18. He's not very far away with 54-33, which was better than the lifetime best of the other two in the final. Gustav Tuchka. Now the outgoing European champion. Two golds in Berlin, two silvers in Bitgosh. Svetsov takes the gold, shoots at the silver, and Protonari is third. Still a season's best for Proto Natarius. Well, these championships were supposed to be last year, but obviously almost everything, everywhere postponed in uh, 2020. So three years since the last European Championships, it will be three years until the next Euros in 2024, as 22 and 23 will be World Championship years. Thomas Anand and the shot put, 12-26. And that's pretty much a winning throw already. The seven times world champion. And there is pretty much nothing to prevent a victory here. She's won gold in the Euros in 2018 and 2014. She's already broken a championship record. That's 12.38 with her first two throws. And uh, Nicholson with a no throw in the opening round. It's her first Europeans after that fourth place in the Worlds in Dubai. Well, that should be clean enough. Chemical engineering graduate for Newcastle University, coached by Richard Kaufman, lives in Houghton Le Spring. They said Harry is a team. We produced a few good throwers this week. And potentially primed to get up into the medals here. Six meters 49. A bit more distance needed. Olesiewska, the European silver medalist last time out, and a world bronze at the Olympic Stadium in London are those great, well attended championships. <laughs> Well, 8.44 is her lifetime best, and she's really threatening that already. Basically needs to go way beyond a lifetime best to be anywhere near Pomazan. But 827 is an improvement. And that's the best reaction I've ever seen for a season's best. We have had some new viewers ask, by the way, how do you get involved? How do you get to compete? Well, wherever you are, you can uh, 
try and make contact with your own National Paralympic Association. They're always very welcoming. Some have got uh, talent spotting programs. Ukraine have got a very good one. It's the server throws in the third round to the Czech Republic. Uh, Britain have one, Ireland have one. Server's best 803 to date. 885 is a new lifetime best, and she goes into the silver medal position ahead of Malashevska. Pomazan with the championship record broken twice already. A European record is 1359. Tokyo is the main target of this year, where this is still a massive championship. World record line belonging to Wang Jun from Rio in 2016. They'll all be trying to get a shot at in the Paralympic Games. Stuck a foot out there deliberately, wasn't happy with the throw. She knew straight off as we finished off round three and we reached the halfway point with. Anna Nicholson. Now, 8.47 is a lifetime best. So she has been in her career being capable of a throw that would get her into the medals. As we always say about lifetime best, they are one-offs until you do it again. Eight twenty-seven is currently the uh, bronze medal mark for Malachevska. Well, that will be an improvement. Six seventy-six. The season's best is half a meter clear of that, and this will bring us to halfway now, Malachevska. Battle for her, though, really is for the silver medal between her and Luxova. Poland with 13 titles this week, 42 medals won. And 700, 750 odd athletes competing, and they normally produce the goods tremendously. 836 at best of the day. We do reach halfway now, and she's in the bronze medal position. An extra advice coming. Nice encouragement, our coach is Grasnia Kocznyuk. Her uh, father Miroslav was a para para lifter and a para athlete. And a good one, golds in Seoul and Barcelona. As we go back to Makov, the men's javelin is wrapping up, for him at least, in the F-54. Yeah, and after Makov, there'll be just one left to throw. He's been consistent. So 28, 86 is best prior to this. He's improved with every single throw. Very rare you see that. And he's improved again. 29.02, a new lifetime best. But he just misses out on a bronze medal. 
Well, that's a rarity. Every single throw got better and better. 26.63 all the way through to 29.02. Back to the track. The men's 400 metres T44 final. This one, a non-medal event. The only non-medal event of the day. Just two going. Emmanuel Di Marinino of Italy and Vardasevich of Belarus. Vardasevich has just recently turned 22. This is the first major championships for him. This man here who took fourth in 29 of the world sees the partner of Ayala Didai who has won the 100, 200 and uh, she's a long jumper as well. She'll run the next race on the track, by the way. That's the T11 200 metre heats, which uh, follow this. So away they go. De Marina in lane four of Italy and it is Bartoszewicz of Belarus who goes in five. It's his first major championships to be able to run the track. Just soak in the atmosphere of being around the other athletes as well. And he's looking pretty solid at the moment. As they round with about 150 metres to go and it's Bartoszewicz who has maintained that distance pretty much the whole way through this deep. T44 category and Fada Shavich is now being chased by Di Marino but he's tightening up towards the end. Di Marino might well catch him. Fada Shavich almost had a stumble there. But he's being caught with the last 20 metres and Di Marino will a record of 56.58. Rounded down to 56.56 for Di Marino. Well he left it late. Bartoszewicz had a stumble in the last 50 metres. I thought he was actually going to go down there. But he managed to hold on. But he did manage to hold on to the win. So Di Marino takes it. This T44 category, the lower limb competing without prosthesis. If you're affected by a, a limb deficiency, either a leg length difference, impaired muscle power, or the impaired passive range of movement. Just here was where I thought Bartoszewicz would go. He didn't. The exhaustion. And Di Marino catches him in the last 15 metres. And 400 metres at any level is a very hard event. Set it out in sections, and you must have a solid bend and last 100 metres, and that's what Di Marino did to pick up the win. Experienced campaigner, he took bronze in the 2014 and 2016 European Championships. He set a European record of 56.56 seconds. Vardashevich 56.91, just beaten out with the European record for the Italian. But his partner, Didai, is set to go up shortly. <laughs> Women's javelin throw F46. <laughs> Picard with a lifetime best of 41.15 for Poland. <laughs> 32 89 for Shepkiewska. <laughs> Roda of the Netherlands. Just 21 years of age. Adamczyk, the second of the polls to go in this one. She's just turned 20 years of age and 
Oh, we'll suck a lot. 36-38, her lifetime best set this year for the Serbian. Holly Arnold of Great Britain, who is isn't here, holds the European and Championship records. Set respectively in Dubai for the European record in 2019. Berlin had the last championships for the championship record, the world record. 45-73, Holly Robinson of New Zealand set in Sydney two years ago. So neither of the Hollies are here, one with a really good reason. Uh, Malashevska then, her uh, penultimate throw, lying in the bronze medal position. So an improvement of 21 centimetres needed to push the pole up the standings. There's been lots of hours and hours of live TV coverage in Poland on national TV this week, which is always great to see. Oh, she likes that. 8.67. So she doesn't go up into the silver medal position, but she improves her lifetime best by two centimetres. And there's still one more throw to go. Sova has two. Bronze in Berlin for the Czech Republic. Officially, they've been trying to get people to call the country Czechia, which is fine. But if you keep putting the Czech Republic on your singlet, we're going to keep calling it the Czech Republic. She's solidly in the silver medal spots. She too has set a new lifetime best today. So pretty much, unless Anna Nicholson produces something really big in the fourth round, I think everybody's locked in the position where they are. But so it's 792, that's her second shortest throw of the day. Pomazan, well clear. She's been claiming European titles, even going back to 2012 at Stats Canal when she won gold in the discus, as well as the shot. Concentrates on this now with good reason. 12.19, she's thrown further than anyone else. And she is in a class of her own almost. So Anna Nicholson rounding off a competition for Great Britain. Focus, focus, focus. And that is out. So she will finish in fourth place. Up in Tokyo, a prime possibility for her Malchevska. With another European medal, having won silver in Berlin. And it's going to be bronze this time, surely. She would need to add a, a major amount again onto her lifetime best, onto her new lifetime best. And you'd love to see that happen. Obviously, looks over in the second place wouldn't, but Malashevsky's already set a couple of new lifetime bests today. 788. Well, it's a good haul. It's another major championship medal for her, and she finishes with the bronze. Looks over. We'll have a silver, 885 being her best.
7 metres 90. You're seeing a lot of distance being lost in the final round throws, certainly in the last round, compared to the peaks. Pomazan has peaked with another goal. It's her fourth gold in the European shot put in five European championships. And the other one she didn't win because she wasn't there in 2016. Brilliant solid throwing. Well, ahead of the last Paralympic game, she decided to skip the Euros, not this time around. It's her first major competition of the year. It's her first competition full stop, and she's won it. She's European champion again. 12.38 her best. Broke the championship record twice, which she held anyway. And she'll be grappling with the best of the rest in the world. And that is the best of the day. 12.81 is half a meter off her own European record set in Rio. And for the third time today, Maria Pomazan breaks her own championship record. Pomazan takes the gold for Ukraine, 12.81. Looks over the silver for the Czech Republic, and Malachevska, the bronze for Poland. Brandon Stavlin throw F54. Seeded category, all six are taken at the same time. Hasn't been great so far for Georgiadis. That one's okay though. Paralympic champion and his Greek compatriot, Manolis Stephanodakis. He's in the lead. Well, that moves him up from no mark up to his sixth position. So one left to go. He need to find around eight metres to get into the medals. Oh! That is a no throw. So. Georgiadis not happy. That's his lot for the day, though. He was okay in the chair. Tablet didn't land on his point. So that is a foul throw. Just the one mark, and he'll finish in sixth place. Stefan Adakis wins again the Paralympic champion again the European champion so he has the European championship to his Paralympic gold and his two world championship goals does Stefan Adakis So the women's 200 meters, T11, complete visual impairments. Two heats in this opening round, with only the winner guaranteed a place in the final. And the middle line is most important for us, going into this Libby Clegg. Competes in the European Championship for the first time in seven years. Ayala Deadeye, Joanna Mazur in this as well. Three great names. Guides mandatory. So in seven, this week's European 400 and 1500 meters champion, the five-time European champion, Joanna Mazur, and her guide, Michal Stavitsky. In lane five for Italy, silver in the 100, bronze in the long jump this week, seven times European medal star, Yola Deadeye, and her guide, Andrea Rigobello. And in lane three, the reigning Paralympic champion of a 100 and 200 for Great Britain, Libby Clegg, and her guide, Chris Clark. Clegg only competing in the 200 meters here. So it's the first in each heat, the winner of each heat, plus the next two fastest times 
to qualify to the final. Clegg, the Commonwealth Games champion in 2014. European champion last in 2012 in Stadskanal, ahead of the London Paralympics. So Clegg in three, Deadeye in five, and Mazur in lane seven. Mazur was the European champion in Grisetto in 2016, but she's champion this week as far as 1,500 meters. Deadeye has already seen has already enjoyed her other half claiming victory in his European final. Clegg being pushed by Deadeye here, and Clegg will push out in front. 27-71 with the victory, Deadeye in second, and Mazur in third. Twenty-seven seventy, and she was pushed quite a bit. Well, Clay, who finished outside of the two hundred meters final at the Worlds in Dubai eighteen months ago, that was her first championship since Rio twenty sixteen. She's pushing herself back in life again to compete. Had to push herself for the victory there, and Deadeye was not that far away. That might be a good enough time for the final, and it's the next two fastest times to go through. Neither of them treated that as a time trial at all, with the knowledge that victory would qualify them to the final. So Libby Clegg definitely going through Deadeye's time quite fast. Mazur has a chance of reaching the final as well. Well, Clegg's career peaked to this point, those goals in Rio. As we go to the men's long jump, this is T47 and Perez Hernandez. In the opening exchanges of this. Two Spanish in this. Matthew Moulard, who we saw in the high jump earlier in the week. Quite a few of the high jumpers will also compete in the long jump in this category. Hernandez goes to 6.13. This is Carlos Perez Hernandez displacing Daniel Perez Martinez. Nicolazzi of Georgia. Finished fourth in the last European long jump. He's born and raised in Tbilisi. 617 is his lifetime best. Nikita uh, Kotakov, who was in the starting lineup, doesn't start. So we're only going to lose one of the nine who are jumping in this for the second half of the competition. finished 17th uh, down the line of the last Worlds in Dubai and he is uh, concentrated firmly on the long jump. 594 still puts him up into fourth place by Perez's. Moshalov next for Bulgaria. And he's the reigning European champion, Moshalov. So they've saved the best till last. What can he it's provide a, his us only major championship 
metal to date. It's an interesting sporting motto. Train like hell or go to heaven. Different. It's a big fan of Yvette Lalova. Colio, the ace Bulgarian who's won quite a few European athletics titles in a time. And 585 puts him fifth. seated javelin reaching its conclusion Manolis Stefanidakis takes the gold for Greece, championship record 3074, Kushan the silver for Slovakia and Ravenko the bronze for Russia just edged out his compatriot Makov There's a uh, Belgian interest in this long jump. So Perez Martinez, this is Daniel Perez Martinez, is currently lying in third spot, only a centimeter behind his teammate. Carlos Perez Hernandez. Silver in the high jump in Berlin. The one peak of his career pre Bidgosh. He's peaked again! 636! Lifetime best by 14 centimeters and he goes into the silver medal position. The second heat of the women's 200 meters T11. European record holder Libby Clegg winning the opener. Four to go in this one. First major championships for Delia Billiglip. She races out of Leon, also para cross country skier and para biathlon. Wasn't it Akpaluk? Her husband Ugas won gold in the 2018 European Championships. Bill Quintana. Reigning European champion and Yulia Pavlenko. Whoa. Already won two golds oh. here in the long jump and the 100 meters, where she set the championship record in the heat for that. So, Bill Quintana, the reigning champion, she fractured three toes earlier this year, so had to work her way back to full fitness. There's the complete visual impairment category, so guide mandatory. Good field as well. Pavlenko in one, Bill Quintana in three, Akbula in five, Bulaglip in seven. So they're on the way in the women's 200 meters T11 second heat, and we've already had a pull up. Akbula has already pulled up with a, with a back hamstring injury. So she's out already, so we're down to a racing three, but the first to go through automatically is Bulaglem, who's raced out in front, but she's being caught on the bend by Yulia Pavlenko, who's looking to get herself a third European goal if she can get through to the final, but Bulaglem is holding her off, and Bulaglem at this stage looks as if she's going to win. She does that, 27-9-1. Pavlenko in second, and coming back in third place.
Well, the lady who took gold back in 2018, Bill Quintana, she's out. Gula <laughs> Glamo, lifetime best of 27.90 for her. She took bronze in the 100 metres, fourth in the long jump, but she's through to the final this evening. Well, we just missed it there. The Akbala pulled out. Who was the gold medalist back in 2014? But Bulaglem at her first major championship. The lady who races out of Lyon held off a fast finishing Yulia Pavlenko, who's also at her first European championships. The 29 year old who went in lane one. But Bulaglem, she held her form, she held her technique, and she held herself together, helped out by her guide. For a clear. So no issues there in that one. Akbalut didn't finish. She pulled out early on. Quintana, the reigning champion, is out. It's Bruligleb. He goes through with Pavlenko as one of the fastest qualifiers. Clegg and Didi from the opener make up the final. <laughs> Disappointment for Agbullet. Will there be disappointment for this lady or success in the women's javelin throw F46 at Sokolov? Well, we've seen a lot of her this week. Oscar Sokolov, the 200 meters champion for one of her times. He's now a uh, 100 meter champion. And obviously an ex long jumper. He started off in the javelin about 10 years ago. It's still a really unusual combination, but he's already won one goal this week in the 200. And she's going in the 100 meters final tonight. Theoretically, a chance of three goals. Or maybe two goals in the silver. It's a lifetime best has her in second here at 36. Well, this is an interesting lady, this one. Broader, who's in first position, she was discovered by Marlene Van Ganswinkel during a Para Athletics Talent Day. So, Van Ganswinkel has had a decent enough championship by herself, along with Fleur Young, who I suggest has had a better one. I don't know if all the coaches in the background there in the stand as he watches on his young charge. She's currently in first position, 38.08 her first. There's not much in it though. Sokolov with that lifetime best in second position on 36.78. So she'd be looking to extend. But it's a foul. So she stays in first place though. Follows Adavich. 24.09 and three fouls currently in fifth position. I think she may have tipped over the line there as well. She has. So that's a red flag. Understandably disappointed in her home championships. What's the season best with her opener though? Well, now we go into the medium visual impairment category, the women's 200 meters T12. Where the great Amara Duran is the world record holder. So three going in this, Kilic, Chirujo and Folgado. 
and they have all medals so far this week. Well, in lane seven for Spain, the European 100 meters champion, Nagore Olcado Garcia, and her guide, Juan Ragabarro. In lane five for Portugal, the 100 meters bronze medal this week, Sarah Arujo and her guide, Mariana Duarte. And in lane three, the European 400 meters champion this week, fourth in the 1500 meters final, Sevda Kilinch Kirigolu and her guide, Okan Yilmaz. So like in the T11, it is the first in each of the two heats to qualify, plus the next two fastest times. Kilinch in three, Arujo in five, Folgado Garcia in lane seven. So away first time, Morgana Garcia away very well in lane seven, looking for a great sprint double, the 17 year old, and she's looking good at the moment in this 200 heat. Kilinch on her outside, the 400 champion trying to gain up in this week's 100 champion. Good advice from Juan Ragavaro alongside Volgado, who is going to take this. And the winning time is 26.86. Arujo in third for Portugal. But Nagore Volgado Garcia, well, what a week she is having. Absolutely spellbinding. We've seen some utterly great things this week from new names, particularly from Mela Menya in the T54. But how about this from Folgado? Well, she first competed in Dubai as a 15-year-old at those World Championships when she was uh, out in the hints about the 100 and the 200, but in her first ever European Championship. Couldn't have gone much better than this. The Valencian, coached by Julio Santo Domingo, is looking like a real superstar in the making. As we've said about Merle, you can talk about champion of the future she's a champion right now she does have that little twinge well i hope that's not bad in terms of the final volcano gets the victory hopefully that's all she's got she is still kind of limping away a, a little bit is that a route uh, it's a Ruho. Seems to be up and okay though, Folgado. So Nagore Folgado Garcia wins. 26.85, Kilinch is through to the final and Sarah Arujo will have to wait. We'll see the 100 silver medalist next, but here goes Rorda again for the Netherlands. Round five of the women's champion at 46. They just keep finding talent everywhere, including athletes doing talent spotting. Twenty-one years old is Noel Rorda. And the Dutch have found another real gem. We have seen her already in uh, Dubai where she finished fifth in the world champions but she's on the way to being European champion here and that's the best of the day 38.76 she too is part of that AV Thanos setup that is based in Amsterdam and trains regularly at the uh, Olympic Stadium Guido Bonson her coach and she was a sprinter for a couple of years and then tried out the javelin three years ago and she threw it for the first time and her coach said wow do that again and she did and she got better and better and better 
A dash of her final round throw after four no throws. It's not been the competition she wanted, sadly. F46, the single arm out of the T category. Well, Davis with her final throw. Sees the best for the first. Four fouls. What is this? Last one brings 23 77. So she bookends four fouls with two legal throws. She finishes in fifth place with the season best. Spadvitska from Ukraine. Her final attempt, she's in fourth position. Needs to make up around 90 centimeters. Doesn't look like it's going to be enough. Thirty-one ninety-two. So she'll finish out of the medals. Pick up. She has a load to make up. <laughs> she likes it. Katarina Pink out, 35 years of age. 21 years she's been in Paris Sport. Silver medalist in Berlin. Well, she seems to have liked it, but clearly not. Sokolov of Serbia. Sokolov's going to improve on her result three years ago. She took the bronze medal back then. Line for a silver medal on this occasion. So 35 08. Lifetime best though. But the Netherlands have picked up another gold medal. <laughs> 21 years of age. No Ruder. Dutch are dancing. Why wouldn't they be? It used to be all about Marlo Van Ryden. Now it's about the likes of Ruder, Jol and Van Ganswinkel. Well, she might go the equivalent of her nickname, which is nuts. So 39.72, a new lifetime best, and a gold medal for Ruda. She did compete at the World Championships back in 2019. She finished fifth on that occasion. She's now a European champion. And the funny thing was, when she was found for that... to her lifetime best. When she was at that talent spotting thing, she actually wasn't that interested in athletics. But Ganserwinkel just saw she had the right physique to be an athlete. She's played tennis all her life and badminton. But look at this, she's a European champ. Positivity wins out again. I think we're going to enjoy watching her in Tokyo this summer.
Gold for Royd, 39.72, lifetime best. Sokol off the silver to go with the 200 meters gold and pick out the bronze for Poland. Second heat of the women's 200 meters T12. Just two to go in this one. So in lane five, it's Anna Kulinic Sorokina. Bronze in 2014, silver in 2016 for Kulinic Sorokina. And Garcia Falaga, the 19 year old, her first major champ since we're in 2018. She finished fourth. She's already picked up a silver medal here in the 100 meters. Kulonis Sorokina, twice a European javelin champion. She won silver in the Paralympic Games javelin. And that is her main aim, is to win in Tokyo in the javelin. But right now, she's running in the 200 metres, the median visual impairment category. So Kulonis Sorokina gets away, but she's already being well caught up on the inside by Garcia Falagan, the... 19 year old but after a very solid first 50 or 60 meters they're now really level and the first who definitively qualifies for the final this evening and it is going to be Anna Kulonich Sorokina who's going to be that person in a time of 26 49 before 73 her lifetime best so well off that mark 2648 has been rounded down to. And 2685 given to Garcia Falligan. Well, Garcia Falligan looked as though after that first 50 metres that she had the measure of Kulis Sorokina. But the 28 year old showed all her experience held herself together both her and her guide Sergei Petruchenko and through they go to qualify for the final this evening that final will take place at 7.16 local time so Garcia Falagan does qualify in that time just outside Kulis Sorokina they're both through to the final Men's long jump T47 still continuing. It is Akin currently lying in eighth spot. We have gone through the halfway point into round four. We are. We've lost Kasper Filso of Denmark, who went out to 5.36. Georges Kostakis with that first round attempt for Greece of 6.43 is our leader. He's a long jump specialist. Akeen has finished sixth in the high jump himself this week. One of the uh, first to bow out in that. He finished sixth in the high jump at the last Europeans. It's his first championship long jump. It was uh, Samson, He's been a sports science graduate.
Well, leaves them up to seventh place, 587. Borshilov just knocked down, having had 585. And the defending European champion is down in eighth place. He's just been off form today. They're all uh, jumping into a very strong headwind. Most particularly his opening attempt, which went out to 585. Now, in saying that, he is only 30 centimeters away from bronze. It's remarkably congested around that area. 662 is his lifetime best. Just uh, got the board at least, got enough of the board. Five eighty means he does not move. So next up for Belgium from the town of Aft in Wallon, Matthew Muller, who is seventh in the high jump. and might be worth having a look at the 100 meters. He sprinted through that really well. That'll be a red flag instantly. <laughs> 593 remains out and he is in sixth place. That's it for Georgia. Fourth in the last European Championships, his best ever result for the Tbilisi native, but an extra 20 centimeters or more from his best, and suddenly he's up in the medals, and he might be. 5.95 in the second round, 6.14 is currently bronze for Matijasevic. And that's impressive. He is a 6.17 jumper in his career. He really liked it. How much of an improvement is it? Well, it's not a 591, but at least good consistency with his marks and a little bit more. And he's up in the medals. It's a lovely day. It's nice and sunny. Perez Hernandez then to no jumps in his last couple of rounds. He's had bad luck really so far in the sprints, disqualified in both the 100 and the 400. Carlos Perez Hernandez on the way, going out towards six meters. It's his first European Championship from Guadalajara, the Spanish one, so probably pronounced slightly differently, not the Mexican way. The biggest city is known as Perez Hernandez, three no jumps in a row. Matijasevic, the long jump specialist who has the second longest lifetime best of the lot here. He's third so far, 6 meters 14. That's a decent effort. 23 years old, Nemanja Matijasevic. The silver medalist behind off last time. Can he improve in the 614 to go higher? He gets the red flag. So not a fair jump this time. There 
as Martin is next up. Silver in the high jump in the last Europeans. Didn't compete in 2016 in Grisetto, but did in 2014 when he won silver in Swansea. But he's missed the last two Paralympic Games. We mentioned during the high jump, he's had three standards, but missed out on both occasions. Sometimes they get you there, sometimes they don't. And he was quite devastated after missing out on both London and Rio. He looks okay for Tokyo. his lifetime best and here's our leader it's Kostakis for Greece jump number four well you usually get a feel for when they get up how much they like it He's on the board. I think he thought that he should have got a bit further. Did the European champion from seven years ago. Well, 6.45, he has improved, so... It might have been two centimetres, but he's improved that season best. So the final of the women's 100 meters T37 and the world record holder goes in this. The great Mandy Francois Ali, the reigning defending European champion. Natalia Kopsa, Anna Sapisnikova will provide great opposition. Well, starting off in lane one, first major championship for the fifth place of the 400 meters, Dominika Rybicka. In lane two for Iceland, the shot put silver medalist. Who comes from the one of the two at the last Europeans and silver in the long jump. For Begrin off, and now Stein's not here. In lane three for Russia, gold in the universal relay last night. Bronze is in the two and the four here for Victoria Slanova. In lane four for France, the reigning European champion, the 2012 Paralympic champion, and the twice world champion from Lyon in 2013, Andy Francois Ali. In lane five for Ukraine, the twice world champion, Natalia Kopsa. In lane six for Russia, this week's European long jump champion, Anna Sapiznikova. The third European title. In lane seven for Poland, this week's bronze medalist in the long jump, Marta Petrovska. In lane eight for Ukraine, always likely to be up in the mix of it all, but fourth in the 200 meters here this week, Alina Tarek. And in lane nine for Spain, Tania Castillo Cuesta. Her first major championship at the age of 16. Well, this is competitive, but obviously we have a major headliner in the form of Mandy Francois Ali, Rubitska in one, Adal Stein's daughter in two. Sonova three, Francois Ali four, Kozbar five, Sapiznikova six, Petrovska seven, Terek eight, Castillo nine, the final of the women's 100 meters, T37. Coordination impairment. Set. So they're away. Mandy Francois Ali is away very well alongside Natalia Kopsar, who's the 400 meters champion. Francois Ali taking the two here and looking good in the one to defend the title. It's Francois Ali and Kopsar and Stonova, the one, two, three. Zappas Nikovan looks to be up in fourth place, but Mandy Francois Ali increases the legend. The world's European and championship record holder, and it's the latter that she's broken. 13.25. She's gone faster this year, 13-16 is season's best. 
0.06 outside a road world record. She was pushed all the way by Natalia Kobzar, but Mandy Francois Ali delivers again. That's now five gold medals in her last three European Championships. She's one of the greats. <laughs> she was. She has been one of the great headline acts in French para sport for a decade. She was one of those, along with Mariam Lee Lefer, used as the faces of the World Championships in Lyon in 2013. She's still on a big high. She's European champion again. She's done the same gold in Dublin bid gosh as she did in Berlin two years ago. Mandy Francois Ali. And yet again, the Paralympic Games are calling. And you go back to the 2012 Euros when she finished second in the 100 meters final. The legend grows and grows. Five European crowns now. Mandy Francois Ali the gold for France. Kosa the silver for Ukraine and Sonova the bronze for Russia. Zapasnikova in fourth, Terek in fifth. Mary Aldinafer had originally been named in the French team, but she had decided just on the eve of these championships that she's not going to compete again until we see her competing in Tokyo at the Paralympics. Moula of Belgium, his fifth round attempt at the men's long jump T47. Kostakis of Greece, our leader on 6.45. Well, he's still only 22. It's his second European Championship, still looking to get an entry into World Championships. We've got two of those in a row coming up, Kobe. Due to be later this year, moved to 2022. There will be a 2023 World Championships are scheduled, so something's had to give. So next year's Europeans, as was part of the rotation, uh, now being pushed on to 2024. And that's knocking around a lifetime best beyond six meters it's 604 for Moolah and that is a new PB Nicolazzi next for Georgia 595 is best well the only Lynn but he's in terms of the position well out of it it's only 19 centimeters away from Matzo Savage. And speaking of 19 centimeters, he was even further than that away from the board. T47 is the blow, elbow, or wrist amputee category. 575, so in reality, he's covered about six meters there in the air, which would have kept him in sixth anyway. Moolah's done really well to get up to fifth, by the way. He's mainly been a, a high jumper. It's, it's his first competition in the long jump. Might be a future in it. Suggested by this result. Perez Fernandez. Three, no jumps in a row. This is penultimate try. 6.13. One more centimetre. And he's up in the medals. Matis Savic on 6.40. Well, Perez Hernandez, not this time, I don't think.
He's been coached by the famous Cuban long jumper, Ivan Pedroso, who Will mentioned earlier. So he's got plenty of skill in this corner when it comes to helping out how his technique is perfected. Well, 6.03. So still stays in fourth place as Matusevic. Well, he likes that one. Straight up and over to his coach. 6.14 with his second jump. He's 22 centimetres away from second place, Perez Martinez. bronze medal position. He took silver three years ago. Missed out the medal at the World Championships. Finishing in fifth. A 6.45. That puts him into that silver medal position which he attained three years ago. The final track event of the morning session. Men's 100 metres, T51, the same three who went up against each other in the T51 200 metres final earlier this week. The man they'll be all chasing will be the one in the middle. Peter Hennan, who holds the world, the European and the championship records. This man so many times has been the bridesmaid, Tony Pispinen, lifetime best of 2021. He took gold in 2013 and 19 at the Europe and the World Championships. Pennon, reigning double European champion, he won gold in the Worlds in 2015 and 17. He's already won gold in the 200 here. This man took bronze, held a Mestra, 54 years of age. Made his senior debut back in 2015 oh, in Doha. Man. So Pennon, in lane four, in the middle is the one to look out for. He holds all the records in this category. Stretching back to the championship record from 2016 in Grisetto. And they're away. This is slightly slower. This is the most impaired of these categories. And Pispinan has done plenty of work to a really quick lead. And he's going to hold on. And he's going to cause an upset against Peter Hennan. And he's won in a championship record time of 20.10 seconds. Well, Hennan never really got going. But Pispinan, he's done a load of work. on improving his chair. He's the European champion. The man from Finland. Well, so many times he's been left in the wake of the man who finished second this time. He was second back in 2016. He was second in 2018. He's first with a gold medal in 2021. He started watching videos to analyze what was happening and he wanted to improve his first 10 meters. Well, I can pretty much tell you that that first 10 meters there 15 metres, one in the race. So whatever he's been doing to analyse his wheelchair and analyse his own performances, it's worked. There might be a few people come knocking on his door. That was after he placed second in Berlin. He's taken a gold here in Bidgosh. Championship record by Tony Pispinen, 20.10. He's beaten his great rival, Hennan, 
into second place with a season best for Mestra in third. We are now into the final round of the men's long jump, T47. And Bozilov, who was European champion three years ago in Berlin, finds himself down in eighth place. Now, 585 is what he's produced here, which was very close to the medals in terms of distance, but now he finds himself way down considering Matiasevich has leaped out to 6.45, means that 6.40 is bronze for now. So can he get something big out for the final round? Bozilov aiming for over six meters. He had jumped 6.62 when he had won gold three years ago. So he's been a bit off form today. 662 would be well in for gold this time. And that will be among his best of the day, and it's around a meter less than his winning jump from three years ago. Bozilov in eighth. That's a surprise. But then there are some athletes who have been struggling for form a bit going into it. And I mean, you know yourself, Paralympic Games, you train for four years. And you can simply on the day have an off day. Mula, 6.04. Brilliant fifth round attempt to go beyond six meters in competition for the first time in his career. And having concentrated on the high jump for so long, it's looking like the horizontal is the way to go for him. And he sprints quite well too. Five ninety-eight. That's a decent set of marks. Had that dip in the middle, but how well he's recovered from it. As Nikoladze, fourth in the last European Championships in Berlin, finding himself on five ninety-five, and he is forty-five centimeters off the medals. Consistency only 20 centimeters between his five attempts to date. Well, he's approached that strongly, and that might be his jump of the day. Is 18 centimeters shy of fourth spot. So can he rise right at the end? Well, Nikoladze, 587. He remains in sixth. And just look at the consistency. Always out around the same mark. We're down to the last four. Perez Hernandez. It's going to be his best result in any championship. He's fourth. He's been edged on by his teammate Perez Martinez. Even though if it's a great leap, he's the man who would miss out. Not sure that's the added 30 centimeters needed. 6.13, it's quite solid for the day. His uh, lifetime best. 
Clarence Hernandez. It's 6.44, which is just a centimetre off the current silver medal mark. And it looks like it's missed out in the medals. He came very close to it. That's his savage up next. So, 6.45, same as Kostakis. And if he goes 6.44, he goes above Kostakis and can back. Anything further than that. And he goes into the lead outright. On his own right. Has he pulled it off? I'm not so sure. Clip the front of the board. Well, it's giving 20 centimeters away, but it's better than clipping the back of the board, isn't it? That's generally earned a flag today. And Matisevich. How close? Six forty-four. He needs for the lead. That's due to count back. Six thirty-six. It's silver, and only Perez Martinez can deny Kostakis now. Twice a European silver medalist. He's in third now. With six forty. 6.45, puts him level with the other two, but we'll put him into silver and count back. Further than that, well, you know. And look at those set of marks. Perez Martinez and Kostakis with no miss yet, and all in the mid six meters. Matiasiewicz in silver, had three no jumps, but one very large one. So Perez Martinez, he's really attacked that board strongly. Well, it's going to be one of the best results of his career. And it is a red flag. And uh, there is a lot of the Marco Tamberis about him. With the half beard, he gets a full bronze here which means Kostakis is the European champion. His third European crown, having won the long jump and the triple jump in 2014 in Swansea. So Kostakis for the first time in seven years as a European champion. This to round off an excellent competition. Those marks are fabulous. His shortest jump, 6.39. And that's a foul, it's a red flag. It doesn't matter because he is the European champion. He's had to wait a long time for this. Lots of competitions where he hasn't quite scaled the same heights as before, but now he has. He got out to 6.25 this season. That wouldn't have been enough for a medal today. He's had to boost. And how he has done that. 6.45 for Kostakis, 6.45 Matiasevich, and the Battle of the Perez is won by Martinez ahead of Hernandez to get the bronze. Mula in fifth had produced a very good display likewise for his debut long jump competition. He'll be bringing a gold again back with him to Athens, coached by Nikos Vatoy and Kusula Orfanu. Athens have had their big share of top athletics events in their time.
Definitely we've been spoiled by the long jump competition so far. The likes of Fleur Young and Marcus Rain delivering. Time to give thanks. So gold for Georges Kostakis, 6.45 on Kanbag from Nemanja Matiasiewicz. Daniel Perez Martinez in third. Carlos Hernandez finishing in fourth spot. The second best attempt of Kostakis was three centimeters ahead of that from Matiasiewicz. So 62 medals, 28 golds for the Russian Federation. Ukraine with 16, Poland picking up more today in the field so they've 13 now germany well menya what a discovery four gold to them 15 medals 10 medals for serbia and greece each a uh, belgium with peter gennett uh that is silver today they've got three medals one of each and so do hungary ireland have got three competitors tonight trying to add to their gold and their bronze same as latvia and 31 nations have medaled at these World Para Athletics European Championship so far. We will be back in four and a half hours time live. 17.30 Central European time, 4.30 in the UK and Ireland, uh, 15.30 GMT. Any other time zones, you can look them up yourself. So until then, goodbye. Ostatnią sesję powołują do zobaczenia.